Good morning, everybody. My name is Tim Bull. I'll, go, I'll walk over here. My name is Tim Bull. I am from, uh, yeah, headphones on, please. Um, I am from a company called InEvent. We are an all-in-one event management platform. We are hosting this stage. Uh, we have a little booth next door. You're more than welcome to come and talk to us after we've got some giveaways and things, um, talk to you about your events and what we might be able to do for you. But today, we have a, a packed session of events today and sessions. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce a very good friend of mine, Mr. Mike Burns um, from VFES. Uh, so a little bit of intro, intro for this event, uh, this session. So one size doesn't fit all. When it comes to events, businesses now require bespoke solutions to help them hit their event goals, especially when hosting multiple types and sizes throughout the year. Modular tech is the solution. So we have here uh, VFAIR's CRO, Mr. Michael Burns. He's going to discuss how modular event technology has become table stakes for organizations who need events to align precisely with their brand and message. So Mike's going to walk through some examples of modular tech and customization tools, et cetera, et cetera. So I won't use up any more of his time. I will hand you over to Mike. I would just like to bring your attention to this QR code for uh, Pigeonhole. This is where you can post questions, and I will see you when Mike's finished speaking, and we'll go through some of those questions and uh, deal with them then. So over to Mike. Good luck, Mike. Thanks, Tim. How's everybody this morning? Good. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, there was some fun had last night after day one of Event Tech, but not so much fun that you guys fall asleep during my session. Uh, so that, that you know, perfect middle zone is what we're looking for. Uh, so as Tim said, uh, I'm Michael Burns. I'm Chief Revenue Officer at VFairs. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about my background in a couple of slides, but I, I do want to start off with uh, a quick informal poll. Um, how many events do we do each year individually? Between one and five, show of hands. Five to 10, show of hands. 10 to 50, show of hands. 50 plus, show of hands. Okay. Uh, and of those events, what percentage requires the exact same tech stack? Same reg module, same landing page, same workflow, same mobile app. Can you rinse and repeat on pretty much, yeah? 10% of them, rinse and repeat. 50% of them, rinse and repeat. Yeah, that's great. Save, save money, right? Uh, less than 5% rinse and repeat. Some pretty unique, you know, events. Yeah, and that's what we're going to talk about today, uh, is the fact that, you know, different events require a different approach. Uh, one size does not fit all. And I think over the past 20 years in this industry, what the, the event tech trend has been is trying to have uh, a, a panacea tech solution, right? You know, the one platform that rules them all, right? A self-serve, easy to use back end. Uh, and I, I think that's an admirable goal that we had as an, or, uh, as a, uh, an industry. Um, but what we're seeing is that it never really lived up to the promise, right? Uh, events are still unique beasts and we need to treat them as such. So a little bit about me uh, and my background. Uh, so I've been, I need to update the bio. It's been closer to 20 years that I've been in the event technology space. Uh, I started on the planner side, uh, working for a, a PCO, a professional conference organizer, uh, doing B2B, one-to-one uh, -one meeting focused events. Uh, and then I had my own company, my own PCO, uh, where we did um, uh, about 15 uh, B2B events annually. Uh, and I did that for six or seven years. Uh, and then I got into the tech side, uh, went to the, the, the dark side, as, uh, as some might say, uh, and spent some time at, at uh, a platform company pr uh, prior to the pandemic. Uh, and then uh, over the past year, I've rejoined the event technology space as CRO of VFairs. Uh, so I, I have, I think, a bit of a unique perspective. Uh, I think most uh, you know, event tech executives uh, probably haven't been true planners uh, or organizers, uh, and having that perspective an understanding of the the day-to-day -day realities uh, that you know we as planners face, I think, has really informed our, our corporate strategy and and indeed you know my uh, uh, motion from a go-to-market standpoint. Uh, so about VFairs, uh, so we're uh, an end-to-end -end event technology platform. You guys have probably heard that from 15 or 20 different uh, uh, booths over the past uh, uh, day or so. Uh, our history is a little bit unique, though. So VFairs started in 2014. Uh, and what VFairs stands for is virtual career fairs. So we were doing virtual events before virtual events were kind of a thing. Uh, and we were a nice little company. We were growing, uh, doing you know, career fairs for some pretty big brands globally, Nestle and, and organizations like that. 
And then the pandemic hit, and we were really well positioned to take advantage of the new reality of virtual events. Uh, so our, our revenue spiked, our customer count spiked. You know, we had, uh, I don't know, 60% of the Fortune 1000 that were customers of ours. Uh, and I think our, our CEO uh, did something really unique uh, during the pandemic. Uh, he said, virtual events are great, and that's always gonna be a part of the, the ecosystem, but the day the pandemic ends, planners are gonna go right back to their reg platform uh, and right back to the way that they did things previously from a tech standpoint. So what we did during the pandemic is took you know, the, the good fortune that we had of being able to you know, understand the market uh, and make some choices as, as to our roadmap and development, and we decided to build a proper from the ground up end-to-end -end event platform. Uh, so, so that's what we set out to do. And we'll talk a little bit about why that's important, I think, and why that's really informed our, uh, our decisions moving forward and some of the feedback that we're getting from customers. Um, but yeah, we, so we, we have a bit of a unique take on the industry. Uh, I will say as well, uh, one of the reasons that I joined vFairs is that our CEO is also a planner. So he was planning career fairs and job fairs. Uh, so he understands, again, you know, in intimately the challenges that, that we all face. Uh, a little bit of the numbers uh, on us. So uh, we are a global organization. Um, uh, I think 50 million plus attendees served, uh, I think is an important statistic. So we, we have a lot of data. Uh, we're able to really understand customer sentiment uh, because of the scale uh, that we have as an organization. So I'll talk a little bit about segmentation. And, and, and this is the way that I, I kind of look at customizable event technology. Uh, historically, we've looked at really two different axes of segmentation of events. Uh, one is the event type, right? What are you doing? You're doing conferences, you're doing trade shows, hiring events, et cetera. Uh, and technology was, it was built with that use case in mind, right? Of, okay, you're a conference, you need a conference type app, right? You're a hiring fair, you need a hiring fair type registration workflow. And that, that's good, I think that's kind of version 1.0. Uh, I think over the past you know, several years, we also started thinking about segmentation in terms of the mode of delivery, right? Is it a virtual event? Is it a hybrid event? Is it an in-person event? Um, and that, that kind of informed strategy and, and tech roadmaps uh, over the past couple of years, right? How do we tweak the features on you know, a virtual delivery model? Uh, so, so those are interesting things to, to segment off of, and I think there's value there, and I think that's what a lot of you know, the historical kind of legacy approach to developing technology has been, right, let's try to build modules that you could plug and play. However, I think things have changed a bit and, and what technologists uh, are really recognizing uh, and, you know, hopefully that this is uh, what you guys are seeing, you know, kind of in the seat as well, is that there's different segmentation that's really important for us to deliver uh, an excellent event experience. Uh, and that segmentation first and foremost, tracks to business goals, right? So what are we trying to achieve with the event? Uh, and I, and I, there's a marketing concept called jobs to be done, right? Which uh, is all about saying, let's understand what the customer, what the persona is trying to achieve, right? What are their goals? How are they measured, right? How are they gonna hit their bonus, you know, quite literally? Uh, and then let's build solutions and technology that can help them do that. So when we look at the, the very various business goals that we have as event organizers, you know, they're, they're disparate, they're sometimes conflicting, uh, and they certainly require a, a bespoke approach uh, to your planning process, your execution process, and your technology. All right, so some of the, the, the big things that we see, you know, revenue clearly, how many people do revenue producing events? Is that a, a pretty common use case? Uh, thought leadership, right? getting the word out there, maybe academic conferences, right? Um, and th there's some similarities in terms of planning. Of course, you gotta pick a venue, right? But, you know, very, very different execution, right? For those types of, um, and, and they could both be conferences, right? They could both be the same event type, but because your goals are different, it, it takes a very different form. Um, brand awareness, lead generation, you know, again, usually get lumped in into event type, right? But they're very different uh, outcomes that you're looking to drive. Uh, and then some of the things that we see now you know, social causes, right? Uh, a, little, a little bit of a plug, we won the Sustainability Award last night at the Event Tech Awards. Uh, so social causes, social responsibility, sustainability are really important. And that goal is sometimes at odds with things like revenue generation, right? So how do you square those things up? Uh, I think the other segmentation piece, which, which we've seen typically uh, is in terms of event size, 
right? And, and usually, in my experience, kind of the legacy thinking around uh, uh, event size is, okay, if you have a small meeting, you use kind of a, you know, a free or you know, low lift reg platform. Uh, if you're doing you know, the mid-size events, kind of that middle of the bell curve, then your typical self-serve platform will, will you know, handle things. But if we're doing large events, what we're calling extravaganzas, uh, you know, patent pending on, on, the, on the term, uh, then you know, I need to go out and find a custom provider that's gonna build something for me from scratch, right? And there are issues with that uh, that we'll talk about. And then one of the other things that we've seen, right, uh, with our, our history as a, a virtual platform moving into the in-person arena is networking needs, right? So, you know, how do we take advantage of the promise that virtual gave of extending reach uh, and deliver an experience uh, at a hybrid event that's truly um, uh, uh, meaningful, right, for attendees that are attending hybrid or in person. And I'll give an example of this uh, towards the end. Um, yeah, so, so this, in our mind, is the new segmentation, right? And this isn't just about go-to-market and how we're gonna go message our product. This is what's informing our roadmap. Uh, and I, I think in talking to, you know, my peers uh, at other organizations, this type of thinking is really, you know, what's coming to the fore, right? Uh, we spend a lot of time at VPRs talking to our customers. We just had our, our customer summit uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, and these types of conversations centered around business goals, right, and how we could help them achieve, you know, not just, you know, excellent execution and good attendee satisfaction and cut down hours on their planning process, but, you know, how are we truly achieving their individual goals with technology uh, has been, you know, really at the forefront of, of our minds. So, yeah, the, the old way was, you know, let's, let's build something, you know, really out of the box or in the box, I suppose, off the shelf. Uh, that tries to take ad advantage of and really take care of as many events as we possibly can, right? Which means it's, you know, the technology is 80% good enough for 80% of my events, right? And that, that's, that's not bad, right? That's not a bad approach. The new way, though, is I want it to be 100% right for 100% of my events. Uh, and again, typically what that required was multiple providers, right? Uh, multiple tech vendors, uh, probably some you know, some long hours uh, from you guys, uh, tweaking things, doing builds, right? You know, trying to figure out how to do a custom landing page, right? Getting with your marketing team, hiring developers, right? A massive lift, right? And that, that really uh, was a disservice to the planner from the event technology community because, you know, we weren't really focusing on the true needs, right? Not, not just the needs of the attendees, but the needs of the planners as well. Make sense? Yeah. So when we think about what needs to happen uh, at VFairs, and, and again, hopefully this is something that we'll see you know, uh, being adopted across the rest of the ecosystem, is not just modular, we've always had modular event tech, right? Use the reg module, right? Use the marketing module. Uh, but modular and customizable event technology. Uh, as I mentioned before, I think one of the things that, uh, that I love about VFairs is that we built all our own tech, right? We didn't go out and acquire a bunch of companies uh, where we're trying to, you know, mash technology together and make it work uh, and focusing our time on integrating, you know, the stuff that we bought. We built everything from scratch, which means that we have the code. We could surface the code uh, and we could code for our customers. Uh, so when we think about modular tech, uh, we think about it first and foremost saying, okay, what, what aspect of the planning process or execution process are we directing a solution towards, right? Is it pre-reg, is it marketing? Uh, and, and how can we truly customize this uh, for the need, the job to be done uh, for the, the organization, right? So the big, the big shift that we think that the industry is going to take is less cookie cutter, self-service back end and more, here's a platform that's, you know, that's 80% good for 80% of your events, but then we'll customize to make sure that we have 100% fit for 100% of your events, right? Which means that you'll see, I think, some consolidation in the industry as well, right? Uh, as, you know, people with kind of the, you know, that, that legacy approach of, of, you know, acquiring technology and companies, trying to integrate them, I think that'll be phase one of this move to customization. Uh, I think phase two will be uh, what, you know, I, what we're doing at VFairs, which is actually building from the ground up on one data layer. Yeah, so the, the, the hallmarks of the, the pillars of this philosophy for us are adaptability, right? Uh, I talked about that quite a bit, right? So how do we adapt the technology uh, to really fit with the specific use case and goals that the organization has? Uh, a, a buildable stack. 
So you're not going to use everything for every event, right? So how do we think about you know stacking the technology on top of a data layer, right? To make sure that that uh, that the the workflow for you guys and the attendee journey for your uh, stakeholders uh, is optimized. And then simple insights, right? This doesn't mean you know simple reports, right? Or or few data points. Uh, it means getting insights in a simplified way. Uh, so we've actually incorporated AI into our backend uh, reporting, so you can actually query the vFairs database uh, and get analysis on uh, on any data points that are collected throughout the entire event lifecycle. Right. So instead of looking at a report and and doing just basic data visualization with Tableau or Power BI, you're actually able to do the querying uh, and have insights delivered to you. That that I think is super important, right? And that's a, a, a obviously leans into the customization aspect because the things that you're looking to understand from your events and your data are going to be different based on the, the uh, objectives that you have. So we'll go through some of the examples. I think these are you know, typical modules that, that people use. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all the features that, that, that exist in you know, registration modules across you know, the, the peer group out here. Um, but what we see uh, that's required in, in uh, customization uh, are things like um, you know, multiple payment integrations, uh, managing significant numbers of add-ons. Uh, a lot of what we're seeing now uh, is more affinity programming, right, where we have uh, organizations that are looking to act as kind of a, an experience hub for different vendors. Uh, a good example of this, uh, we just started working with a resort uh, in Canada, a ski resort, and they're doing a, a pride festival, and there are about six or seven different local businesses that are participating, and they're actually acting as the hub for the experience for all the attendees. Great for them because they're collecting all the registration information and data. Also great for them because they're working the payment integration, so they're able to take a bit of a, a processing fee, right? So this is a massive revenue generation opportunity for them. Um, but it requires a really custom registration experience, right? With, you know, multiple uh, add-ons uh, and a, a super, super segmented uh, audience journey, right? So that, that type of a, an approach uh, is very difficult to achieve with kind of an out-of-the-box solution. And a full custom red solution would just be cost, cost prohibitive. Right, so that, that middle ground of you know, starting with uh, the building blocks but then customizing to achieve the use case, I think is, again, where we're going to see things going in the future. Uh, I think marketing is another uh, significant opportunity for us. Right? So uh, there's, in my experience, uh, a, a little bit of a gap typically between the event marketing team and like the digital marketing team at an organization. You know, the digital marketing team has all this cool stuff. Right? They have, you know, they have Marketo, and they're doing all sorts of interesting audience segmentation and personalization. Uh, and you know, as event marketers, we get access to uh, uh, email marketing. Yay, go 2003. Uh, so what, what we're seeing in, in marketing needs is how can we take some of the things that uh, marketing teams, you know, really sophisticated corporate marketing teams have been doing, and uh, package that in a way uh, that's customizable for the event marketing or event planning professional where they could get all the same benefits but not have to go through you know, six years of learning Eloqua, right? Uh, and I think this is another big trend that we'll see from an event marketing standpoint. Uh, so what, what we've done in our platform, uh, and again, it's all built on one data layer, so it's easy to do, uh, is we give people the opportunity to build audience segments. You could, you could do micro segments, right, based on attendee types or demographic filters. Uh, and then we've used AI uh, to give marketers, event marketers, the ability to build uh, customized email and social campaigns based on those audience segments. So what we're seeing now is instead of you know, a, a general update email going out or you forgot to register email going out, we're seeing a sequence of three to five emails very, very hyper-targeted to a specific segment of the audience that are going out uh, aligned with social, which can be done right in our platform. Uh, and what we're seeing is massive increase in conversions, right? Uh, because the, the, it's the same thing that marketing's been doing forever, right? You have to speak to your buyer, right? In our case, you have to speak to your attendee, and different attendees are different and have different goals, right? So the ability to understand that and then communicate to them individually where they are, I think is super important, right? So that's, I think, another le level of customization that we need to see, right? Not just, you know, for us, customizing event type, but also customizing the attendee experience, starting with marketing, right? Not just starting with you know, a, a personalized agenda on the mobile app. Good segue to mobile app. Uh, so we, we, we've seen a lot of great use cases with mobile app. I'll talk about one in a bit. Um, 
you know, historically it's been, okay, download the mobile app, you get an agenda, floor plan, uh, you know, scan the leads, right? Uh, and, and it's, it's a pretty, uh, you know, low lift and low impact uh, uh, type of product. Um, what we're seeing is a lot more demand for uh, more engagement and gamification, right? Which I, again, needs to be customized. So we do a lot of customization around gamification. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of um, uh, revenue opportunity for planners and mobile apps, right? Uh, so I, this is a good thing to go back and talk to your tech vendors about uh, is, you know, things like, you know, splash ads on the mobile app, uh, you know, advertising inventory, uh, different ways that sponsors or exhibitors uh, can monetize things like a scavenger hunt, right? The old passport stamp the card, right? You can do that, you know, pretty easily uh, virtually on a mobile app, right? So thinking a bit more laterally about not just attendee engagement, but also revenue generation from mobile app is something that we're seeing a lot, right? That again does require customization, right? So there's some you know, great, really high-end mobile app companies out there that'll build the whole thing from scratch. Uh, you know, our approach, which is where, again, I think the industry is going from a mobile app standpoint is, okay, 80% of, for 80% of your events, but we'll customize it to get to 100%, right? Let's really understand the goals, and then let's go in the back end and code with you, right? As opposed to, you know, just try to figure out the right tiles, right? Um, uh, so that, that, again, bespoke approach, uh, I think is something that, you know, we're gonna see happen more and more on the mobile app as well. Uh, badge printing and check-in. So th this is an area that I, I think is, you know, it's pretty, you know, obviously it's table stakes. It's been really commoditized over the years, right? You know, print badges, easy, right? Check-in, easy. I think that the interesting thing, though, that, that I'm seeing and we're seeing out in the market uh, that really aligns to customization uh, goes back to the data layer, right? So, you know, typically organizations will have you know, disparate providers that are doing, you know, the badge printing, the on-site solutions, which makes sense, different specializations. Uh, but the key is really making sure that the data from the on-site flows back in to your registration data, right? And maybe into your CRM or whatever your source of truth is. Uh, because when people register, I know I do, I'm guilty of this. You know, if it asks what I'm interested in, yeah, I'm interested in that, click that, click that. Yeah, I'll go see that guy. And then I get down to the, the event and things change, right? I'm a little bit less interested in that, right? I actually go to that event instead, or that speech, right? Um, so looking at what's happening from a session scanning standpoint, being able to understand the delta between, you know, self-reported interests or predilections during the registration process and what happens on the ground can help inform, you know, our, our approach moving forward. Uh, again, with, uh, uh, let's say, check-in, the, the example that I use often, uh, it's a real life one, uh, is, you know, if somebody's dietary requirements change, from when they're doing pre-reg to when they check in, right? Someone checks in and says, I am now gluten-free, right? And you might be able to collect that on, on check-in, right? And hopefully you're communicating that to your F&B vendors, right? But having that data flow right back into your reg data, so that way, you know, you're able to, to pre-populate that information for the next event if that attendee is a return attendee is super important, right? And that requires, you know, either a level of customization in terms of data flow, right? Or, you know, again, a single platform approach. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about virtual events. I, I think this is another area that 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 customization and collaboration piece is really important. Um, I, I think what what I'm seeing a lot now uh, is kind of companies just kind of stamping on a bit of a hybrid thing on top of their in-person event or streaming, right? So it's almost like getting back to what used to be kind of virtual back in 2019, right? Um, the and I'll, I'll talk about networking. I think it's uh, analytics and reporting. I skipped networking. Let's go back. Let's go back. So I, I think that the key thing here is having a disjointed experience is bad, right? Uh, so having a, a great in-person experience and then kind of simulcasting is just, you know, really not fantastic, right? You could get content out, right? But from an attendee experience, you know, it's not really what you want to uh, uh, deliver uh, to deliver a rich, you know, hybrid experience. So stitching together the in-person, the online and the offline uh, with networking opportunities that could go across both, uh, we found is, is really important, right? And I, I think this is where, you know, people are going with metaverse, right? And super immersive virtual technology, which we're doing a lot of, of work on right now. Uh, but really stitching it together is important, right? So, you know, how could I network, you know, I'm here, how could I network with a virtual attendee in a way that's authentic, right? Um, so looking at that online, offline experience is super important. I think from a data standpoint, it's also important, right? So how do we marry up uh, the, you know, the, the amazing data that we used to get with virtual events, right? You know what every click is, 
uh, with you know session scanning and football data from the events, right? Uh, and having one you know data visualization is important, right? Because those are similar data points, uh, but you, it requires a little bit of manipulation if you're using multiple vendors uh, to to really understand that, right? So again, requires I think customization to understand what the attendee journey looks like, you know how it's different and how it's the same across the different modes of delivery. Uh, we talked a lot about analytics and, uh, and reporting, right? Now, I, th I think the big thing here is, you know, what our focus is, is using AI to, to get first level uh, analysis off the data, uh, which is wh where I think things are going to be going. And th that, by its nature, is going to be customized, right? If you're querying a database using ChatGPT, right, that's, again, not a canned report, right? That's something that's super custom and bespoke. Uh, yeah, and I'll talk about a case study before we wrap and, and see if there are any questions. Uh, so one of our customers, JBS Toronto, uh, I think we first started working with them during the pandemic. We were doing virtual career fairs, uh, and then they went to a hybrid approach. Um, and this is a good example of the networking. So you know they were using a bunch of stuff from us, the badge printing and, and check-in that we were doing virtual. Uh, we did a mobile app on site. But I, I think the important thing for us is that we had, well, they had 1,200 combined attendees uh, and 9,200 virtual booth engagements. And that was from in-person attendees and virtual attendees, right? So as people were coming up to, and, and this g gave them the opportunity to expand their revenue base, uh, and also a much more consistent experience across their candidate base. So candidates that were in person were actually able to go up to a, a, a an es essentially a booth, uh, scan a QR code, come straight into the virtual platform, and have a face-to-face -face video meeting with a recruiter uh, that was attending virtually, right? So again, you know, really, really uh, uh, tightly integrated experience, right? So they would go to a, 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 a live in-person booth meet with the recruiter, and they'd be able to do a video meeting right on their phone with another recruiter. So it was a super, super uh, innovative way, I think, to use the platform. We're using the mobile app. Uh, obviously, all the data was collected, but it was, it was a very good example of stitching together in a customized way, because that wasn't out of the box. Uh, you know, a, a multi-modular uh, uh, or a multimodal event delivery type. I see Tim sitting at the front, which means I'm probably coming up to time. Yeah? Uh, so, yeah, I think choosing the right technology is important. Uh, I think that there's you know, a couple of things that I would recommend to look at. If you're going to take a best of breed multi-vendor approach, which has you know, typically been the case, then I think the questions that you need to start asking, I would start asking, are really about how the data all flows together uh, and what level of customization is available. Um, uh, in you know those different uh, technology providers, uh, and yeah, I, I think the other aspect is you know if if you're looking at you know a customizable modular approach uh, from vendors uh, that could definitely work, right? So you know I would still uh, certainly advocate using out of the box, easy to configure technology whenever possible, right? Um, but you know having the ability to to customize and you know one throat to choke essentially. Uh, I think is, uh, again, where, where the, the industry is going. So I'll stop there. Do I have a thank you slide? I do have a thank you slide. Uh, my email, if anybody wants to get in contact, uh, I'll be around all day. Uh, I'm here all week. Um, and thank you very much. I don't know if there are any questions or... Hi. Uh, one throat to choke, that's what you used to say to me when I worked for you. That is 100% correct. Yeah, yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, we didn't have any questions posted on Pigeonhole, but I was just wondering, does anybody have any questions for Mike at all? About VFAS. No? Okay. I mean, Mike, that was completely comprehensive. You were excellent. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Thanks you for the session.